Hi, this is Jim from Golden String Studio. Today we're going to be taking a look at uh, five different birding books that I happen to have. Uh, I'm not recommending any particular one. I just wanted to show you some of what is available. And uh, then, of course, you can review and uh, check out the books yourself and see what one might work best for you. But if you're just getting into birding, uh, a book like this that you can take out in the field or use at home is great. Uh, of course, if you're at home, there are many online sites that are really nice and really help looking and comparing your pictures to um, the identification sites or a book. Also, I'm going to show you something I've started, a little project I've started, that you might be interested in doing for yourself, uh, and I hope that you enjoy all these ideas. Thank you for watching. The first book that we're going to look at in the series of five that we're looking at is called The Birds of Georgia Field Guide, and uh, you can see the author here. Uh, Keep in mind that this book is specific to uh, Georgia in the U.S. where I live and uh, so it will give you a, a more narrow view of the type of birds that you might find right in your vicinity. And you can find these uh, probably for your area as well, either your state uh, or your country or maybe your region that might give you uh, more specific information about birds more local to you. But let's take a look because these books have some great information and uh, they provide you with all kinds of detailed information about the type of birds that you're looking at. The second book that we're looking at is the National Geographic Field Guide to the Birds of North America. So this of course covers a much broader geographic area, but uh, you can see that uh, it too has lots of great detail and information. This one is particular, particularly good about uh, giving you lots of detailed uh, images that you can use to narrow down the bird that you're trying to locate or identify. So just a few pages of this and uh, they give you again, most of these come with indexes and other information that you can use to help identify your birds. The third book we're looking at is Peterson's Field Guide of Eastern Birds. And again, uh, this may not be the most current version of this, so be sure you check the version. And keep in mind that you can, if you don't own these books and may not wish to purchase them, you can go to the library and check some of these out and use them for a while and of course return them. But this is a good guide as well. Again, see a lot of uh, detailed information, sort of like the previous one. Gives you information right on the same page. This one has a good map section that you might want to use. The next one that we're going to take a look at is the Audubon Society Field Guide to North American Birds. And uh, again, this is one that I've had the longest and I've used the longest. Uh, and uh, I think it just has some great shots 
Now this one is formatted a little differently. You, you get the pictures and then it will tell you the page uh, where you get more detailed information including maps, the habitat, uh, size, differences in male and females and so forth. But quite uh, great photos I think in this one. Good color photos and then it gives you the detailed information including the little maps that show you where these birds habitat typically is and what their span is. Uh, again great indexes and things like that uh, and good informational guides that help you again narrow down the type of bird that you're trying to identify. The last book we're looking at in this series is the Sibley Guide to Birds and I know that Sibley, uh, David S uh, Sibley is certainly well known for his guides and, uh, and again just loads of information in contained in these in these books. Lots of detailed information to help you narrow down specifically the type of bird. Some of these birds are so similar in appearance that you may think you have one type and uh, only discover later that uh, it's, it's probably something else. And I'm certainly a novice at, at this. Uh, 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 bird watching is not something I've done all my life. It's only something I've done in the last year or two. Um, and certainly in the, even in the last six months or so have I got more involved with trying to photograph birds in my area. So one of these kind of guys that you can use either out in the field or at home is just um, it's just a great thing to work with. One of the things I might try to do as a follow-up to this video is to maybe do a second part that would feature some of the good online sites that you can use uh, in identifying birds, learning about birds. One of the advantages there is that you can also learn the sounds. Uh, oftentimes when you're out bird watching or shooting photos, you hear birds long before you ever see them and uh, they help you locate them and find them and hopefully come away with a photo. So I may do that as a second part to this video. This next part of the of video is featuring a an idea that I had regarding a a um, sort of creating my own bird identification book of actual photos that I've taken when I go out and shoot pictures and, and look for birds. Uh, I purchased this uh, album and you can certainly buy many different kinds and shapes and sizes. Um, and then I've been uh, labeling uh, using my CyberLink photo director software uh, with the names of the birds uh, and then printing a 4x6 print. So this book is a 4x6 size. And, uh, it, you know, 4x6 prints, uh, either if you print them yourself on your printer at home or if you print them outside, either online or at a retail situation, uh, you can get them very cheaply at most retail stores. I pay 33 cents or less for four by six prints. Uh, and I'll just flip through these a little bit and show you some of the ideas. And this way I can use this as my own personal uh, identification book as well as sort of documenting the, the birds and all that I've captured uh, in photography. even, you know, to a laughing gull. And it's pretty easy in software these days to add text to a photo and then you can print them like that very easily. 
So I hope this might be an idea that you might uh, take on, um, or if you have ideas about uh, things that you're doing to showcase the birds and, and all that you see, uh, I certainly hope that you'll share that and add any comments. But it's a great way to, to uh, again, preserve the type of shots that I get um, and be able to use it as a reference point as I go along. I sure appreciate your watching this video. I hope that if you like my videos that you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, thank you for watching.